Hello and welcome to the State of the Fleet Industry, a weekly video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine and which is sponsored by Enterprise Fleet Management. I'm Mike Antich, editor of Automotive Fleet. And today I'd like to examine what's occurring in the fleet industry for the week of September 6th, 2021. But before I get into my presentation, I'd like to give a shout out to NAFA for its recent INE conference held in Pittsburgh, which I attended last week. And despite widespread and last minute corporate travel restrictions, NAFA delivered an excellent conference with great educational content and a ton of quality networking opportunities for those in attendance. And with the fewer fleet professionals in attendance at the conference, there was lots of time to have in-depth and unfiltered industry discussions. And needless to say, the number one topic of conversation continued to be the ongoing product constraints, primarily caused by the microchip shortage, which as we all know, began to noticeably impact vehicle production in March of 2021, when the first assembly plants started to temporarily suspend production until their microchip inventories were replenished. And as we all know, this ongoing microchip shortage is having a devastating impact on the fleet order to delivery times. And I'd like to illustrate that by having you consider two eye-opening statistics that I heard from one fleet management company about its 2021 model deliveries. First, for 2021 models ordered between October 1 of 2020 and February 28th of 2021, and remember, this is the period prior to the assembly plant suspending production, of those orders, approximately 51% of those models have yet to be delivered to their ultimate destination, namely the dealer, 51%. So when you look at orders placed between March 1, 2021 and August 16th of 2021, altogether 92% of those orders have yet to be delivered. I don't know about you, but these are jaw-dropping numbers that put into context the magnitude of the supply chain disruption. And as we enter the 2022 model year ordering cycle, the consensus among fleet professionals, at least the ones that I've spoken with, is that it'll most likely be a shortened model year and will continue to find difficulty in taking delivery of fleet vehicles, especially trucks and vans, which promise to continue to be in scarce supply. So when the 2022 order banks did indeed open, there was a spike in the volume of fleet orders that were placed earlier than normal, which is what everyone recommended fleet managers to do, and they did it. But the concern is that this high volume of orders for some models, especially those high demand models, will max out fleet allocation early and will witness a new round of earlier accelerated build-out schedules in 2022, the same as we did in 2021. Plus, on September 2nd, just last week, Toshiba threw the industry a bombshell, warning customers that its supply of power chips will remain constrained at least until September of 2022. That's one year from now. And in certain cases, up to end of calendar year 2022, which would put us into the 2023 model year. And what's causing this constraint, according to Toshiba is that buyer demand of its power chips continues to outpace production, plus there are commodity shortages of the materials used to manufacture these power chips, which are contributing to the lengthening of the lead time for their delivery. But first, for just for clarification, the Toshiba chips are not microprocessors, rather they support the functionality of microprocessors in automotive electrical components. So here's how the function of these power regulating chips was described to me using the human body as an analogy. So if you consider the microprocessor as being the brain of the device, the Toshiba power regulating chips are analogous to the human heart and vascular system designed to help, lead, to help smoothly transmit electricity within components. You know, these power regulating chips are not high tech. In fact, they're commodity products, but without them, it impairs the components functionality. And likewise, buyer demand is spiking for these power regulating chips. You know, in pre-pandemic times, namely 2019, Toshiba said it would receive orders only weeks or months in advance for these commodity chips. But today, demand has skyrocketed to where it's receiving inquiries for a half year in advance, and in some cases, even longer, which is filling up their product pipelines. In many cases, the end user companies buying these chips are running scared. They're looking to secure allocation to avoid chip shortages in the future that would impact their manufacturing processes. And 
you know, to be candid with ourselves, it seems that we too, as an industry, have continually underestimated the time it'll take for the imbalance of the ship inventory to be rectified in the supply chain. And if you remember, the first estimates in the beginning of this calendar year was that the chip shortage was to be rectified by the summer of 2021. Then it shifted to the third quarter of 2021, and now we're getting warnings from chip manufacturers such as Intel and Toshiba saying that the imbalance could continue into 2022 and perhaps even into year end 2022, which puts us into the 2023 model year. So what's the industry to do? Is there anything that we as fleet managers can do to mitigate the impact of these supply constraints? Well, fortunately, the answer is yes. And I'd like to share with you seven vehicle acquisition strategies that I've aggregated from industry subject matter experts on how to mitigate the impact of these inventory constraints. So first, it's really critical to be proactive in your vehicle acquisition planning and budget allocation. Because the general feeling is that 2022 will be a short model year, so it's critical that fleet managers um, order earlier than in prior years and to be flexible with their vehicle choices. So strategy number one is to order early. However, this isn't as easy as it sounds. Uh, you know, it may sound obvious, but it takes proactive advanced planning to be able to order early. Now is the time to do that. Number two. Be flexible as to what you order. In the past, when vehicle supply was plentiful, many fleets would demand specific colors, option, trims lo trim levels. And then in today's environment may actually cause delays or add time to the order to delivery process. Second, be flexible as to the class of vehicles you need to acquire. So for example, would a crossover be suitable as a substitute for someone who drives a pickup truck but doesn't need the cargo carrying capabilities? Most pickups are in high demand and in both the fleet and retail markets, while this may be less the case for crossover models, which uh, may have greater product availability. Number three, simplify your vehicle specifications. For some fleets, if practical, and if it doesn't impact the fleet application, simplify vehicle specs in order to increase the number of sourcing options available to you that allow you to order industry-wide from various manufacturers. Also, by streamlining vehicle specifications, again, where appropriate, it'll help move your, prod your vehicles quicker through the upfit process. Number four, be decisive in your acquisitions and be quick to pull the trigger when needed and when the opportunity arises. Today's new vehicle market has limited inventory, so when vehicles are located or found to be available, you have to have the acquisitions pre-approved or have management approval to be able to make immediate buying decisions. This is critical, especially when buying units out of dealer stock. You need to be prepared to make quick acquisition decisions, otherwise you're gonna lose the vehicle to a retail buyer. Number five, move high mileage vehicles to low mileage applications in order to extend their service lives. In other words, practice fleet utilization strategies. This is fleet management 101. Move higher mileage vehicles that are approaching the end of their useful life to less demanding or lower capacity jobs to cost effectively stretch out their service lives. Number six, budgeting. As you plan for next year's budget, it's important to anticipate that there will most likely be price increases across the board from the asset itself up through the upfitting process. Prices will increase, mark my words. Your budget needs to be structured to accommodate these anticipated price increases. And number seven, be flexible. Explore alternative procurement strategies other than traditional factory ordering or buying out of dealer stock, whereas everyone knows inventories are very lean. So for example, short-term rentals can be used to fill gaps while waiting for vehicles to arrive. Now, admittedly, in today's market, this can be very expensive, but it is less expensive than being without a revenue generating vehicle. And also investigate the purchase of pre-owned commercial vehicles. Trust me, there are a number of fleets that are starting to investigate this option. In fact, that was the topic of conversation I had with several fleet managers attending the NAFA conference. There's no doubt about it, these are unprecedented times and now is the time for fleet managers to be proactive. Now is the time for us to be creative. So with this as my final observation, I'd like to conclude my State of the Industry presentation for the week of September 6th, 2021.